Hello everyone, my name is Void Doctor, and welcome to my 1.19 Hardcore Minecraft series. Yes folks, today is the day where I start a new adventure in 1.19 Hardcore. And let me tell you, I have some epic plans for things I want to build in this series and adventures I want to have. But before we get started on any of that, we need to punch a tree. We actually need to have a near-death experience, and then we need to punch down our first tree. Alright, wood has been acquired, and now it's time to make our first crafting table. Alright, I just want to start out by making a wooden pickaxe and a wooden axe. I strongly dislike building in forest biomes, so I want to try and find a... Well, that's very convenient. There's a plains biome. So I want to settle in a plains biome, but maybe near a village? I don't know. I'm just going to look if there's a village that's well-placed in the world. I see you, sheep. This is actually really cool looking up here. I like the shattered sort of cave entrance type thing, but it looks incredibly dangerous inside. So maybe let's not build in there. You are the last piece of wool that I need. All right, because I'm extremely scared for night. I'm just going to make a bed right now, even though it's noon. Let's also just try and get some stone before we arrive at the eventual place where I want to build a base, just so I can have a good start there without having to gather too many resources before I go mining. <gasps> Food. Oh, oh no. Oh my. Oh my gosh. Okay. I hadn't even thought about that, but there goes the axe. Armor. Let's just get some coal as well. And here we are. Let's enjoy the first sunset of our new hardcore adventure on the beach. Sweet dreams, everyone. All right, back on the hunt for the perfect spot to build. And this is looking a lot more promising. I don't know. This just seems like the right kind of plains biome. It's just kind of big. has a coastline. And there's a village over there, actually. And it has a blacksmith. Okay, today is my lucky day. And it has local wood right next to it. This is so good. And here we go. Blacksmith loot. The first iron gear of the series. Even more food. All right, now that I finally found a place where it looks like I can do just a little bit of mining, I want to get myself a stone pickaxe to start out with so I don't break the iron pickaxe immediately. And then once we get down to deep slate, we can start mining deep slate with the iron pickaxe so we can get ourselves some diamonds. All right, gonna make ourselves a shield, get ourselves a stone axe, and time to do some chopping. Grabbed a ton of ladders, and now it's time to do some mining. All right, we made it down to the literal bottom of the world. As you can see, we literally cannot see up this hole. And it's time to do some diamond mining. I just realized it is day one. We are hardly into the video and I'm already doing diamond mining. Let's see, how many is it? Three? I'll take three. Oh, four, four. Nice. This means we can finally make ourselves a diamond pickaxe once we break the other two pickaxes, of course. All right, that is a lot of diamonds we got. So, I think it's time we head back up to the surface and get ourselves some tools. All right, so I want to get a diamond axe, a diamond sword, a diamond shovel. And these two diamonds are for an enchanter, so they can go in there along with the other four. All right, so the next thing I want to do is look for some obsidian. And I think the easiest way to do that is going to be looking for a rune portal. I got monster hunter. I That was kind of cool, but it was also very terrifying. Before I go out exploring anymore, I want to get myself a little bit of iron armor. So I want to see if this can point me in the right direction to a shipwreck. Sorry, not to a shipwreck, a buried treasure. Well, that's already some armor right there. And as always, there's always one in the stern and one in the bow. And the one in the bow is usually the one that has the map in it. So let's see, where does this lead to? Okay, it is very far away. All right, using the 9-9 trick, this should be precisely where the buried treasure... It, it works every time. It works every time. And look at that buried treasure... No diamonds, which is kind of surprising considering they usually have diamonds in them. But that is very good. That is still a chest plate and actually never mind. I have one extra piece of uh, piece of iron back at the house in the village, so we can actually use that. All right, so from that shipwreck, we can make a pair of iron pants and an iron chest plate. And so now we are kitted out in various types of metal armor. And here we are back to the ruined portal we started. Started out with. All right, gather the gold blocks from up there, and now let's grab some obsidian. I will probably need some leather as well. Time to steal the librarian's bookshelves. All right, enchanting table has been acquired, and now it's time to get this thing set up. 
All right, with the bookshelves like that, we should get fairly decent. Oh, wait, I need lapis. All right, efficiency two looks pretty good. And it's just efficiency two. Of course it is. All right, let's see what we get on the axe. I'm breaking two. That's not bad. I'm breaking one. Try that for the that. And then no, just no, nope, no, no sweeping edge. All right, folks, now it's time to do a lot more chopping. Moving swiftly onwards, the next thing I need to do is find a taiga biome, or obviously spruce wood. Now, all I'm going to get from there is saplings and maybe some sweet berries. I don't want to actually harvest wood from the taiga biome. And before we do any of that, I should sleep, I suppose. And hey, it's day 10 now. Look. Oh, and um, I guess I should make this a little bit more clear. This is a set seed, so if I really need to find a very rare biome or a very rare structure that's essential to progressing in the game or something, or just a very cool build that I want to do, I can look on chunk base and see where it is. So for example, if I needed a mangrove swamp, I could look on chunk base because they're so incredibly rare. Here we go. There's a taiga biome. There we go, ladies and gentlemen, a taiga. And now I just want some sweet berries. Okay, maybe not. I don't really want to get lost in this taiga. It'd also be very nice to have some kelp, so don't mind if I do. All right, so now it's just time to wait for these to grow. And while we wait, I guess I'm just going to mine up a bunch of stone since that's another resource we need. All right, it is time to start cooking some stone. And now while that stone cooks, I'm going to do some tree chopping. All right, folks, I've now gathered up all the resources we need to start our starter house build. As you can see, it's going to have a pretty diverse block palette and should be pretty cool. Now, the last thing we need to do is find a suitable location for this build. All right, so right around here seems like a pretty cool spot. Got those hills with the forests in the background. Got a little bit of the coastline, as you can see here, especially from the second floor. You'll be able to see a lot more of the coastline. You can still see the village over that hill. It's just overall a nice piece of land. So I think this is where we're going to be building. Anyway, we're going to build this house in the form of a third person time lapse. So as always, enjoy the time lapse. And actually, I've come to my senses and realized this is the perfect tree for the front yard. So we're actually just going to have the house face this way because this tree is just too perfect to not have in the front yard of the house. Okay, I hope you folks enjoyed that time lapse and well, I, I'm really happy with how this house has come together as a starter build. It is obviously not my finest work ever, but I think given that I didn't have a ton of resources to begin with, it was a pretty good build. I, I, was, I managed to pull together some resources and build something that I'm fairly happy with. And that's really what counts in the beginning of the game. Am I right? So yeah, I, I, think, this is, I think this is a pretty cool looking house. I like, I mean, it's a little boxy, it's a little rectangular, but I think there's some nice texture in there and things. And now it's time to work on some interiors, starting with the kitchen.
Kitchen done. Okay, all the interiors are now complete. And I somehow managed to miss day 20, but it's now almost day 30. All right, folks, but the next project we need to work on necessitates that we leave the cozy interior of our house behind and walk straight out into the rain. That was a very long wind in transition to basically say, I want to work on some more exterior things in the house. And the first thing that I want to do is just add some sort of little utility shed to the side of this house to hold some tools, or not tools, but like tool benches and things. So grindstones, uh, stone cutter, crafting table, maybe just a decorative crafting table, maybe some barrels as well. Sounds kind of cool. All right, and something just as simple as this will do. This actually looks pretty good in my opinion. It really helps break up the rectangular shape of the house quite a bit. All right, however, the next project I want to work on is a little bit bigger than this. You know, I want to add an enormous wheat field. Maybe not enormous this episode, but I want to expand it considerably in the next few episodes. Um, A big wheat field around the house. So... Maybe we'll start out here this way because it's a lot flatter. And then once we get some better tools and things, we can start to flatten this land and make it more appropriate for a wheat field. Right now, I just want to start out with this considering it is already flat. So I'm going to do a bit more mining to get myself some iron for some iron hose. And then we will start tilling the earth. All right, folks, the wheat field is now underway. I obviously didn't want to wait for all this wheat to grow because it has taken forever for it to grow. So we'll expand the wheat field and plant a lot more seeds next episode. However, there is one last thing I want to get done in this episode one of the new hardcore world, and that is get some cows, maybe some sheep, but probably just cows in a pen somewhere around the house so I can start breeding them up off camera and get ourselves some leather, some whoa that's not good oh my god so in next episode episode two we can begin getting some enchantments some books stuff like that so i'm going to build a little pen and get some cows in it and also apparently slowly suffer from poison all right got this whole cow pen set up here got some cows breeding in there and I think the pen itself looks quite nice. I like this little Celtic wall. It's one of my favorite things to put around a sort of farm structure. So I'd like to add one of those around this wheat field, but I'm not really done expanding it. I kind of want to make it go around here a little bit more, not a lot larger, but just a little bit to give us a bit more farming capacity. So yeah, and, and then we'll add one of those little Celtic walls, maybe a little bit ruined, considering this is probably a little bit, a little bit older than the cow pen. So, yeah, I have big plans for the starter base, even though we will be working on much larger projects next episode. Speaking of next episode, you're going to have to wait for it to see any more of this hardcore world because it's time to wrap up the first episode of the hardcore series. So, as always, my name has been Void Doctor. Please like, subscribe, and share if you did enjoy the video and feel inclined to do so. And at right is a video that I personally recommend. It's my newest one. And that left is a video that YouTube recommends and thinks you'll enjoy. So please give them a little look, just for me, personally. And I'm out. Have a good day.